it going, everybody? My name's Avid, and today we are going to talk all about structure blocks, how to use them, and why I think they are the future of Minecraft. As you can tell, structure blocks can be used to place any vanilla Minecraft structure anywhere in your world. But did you know that you could also place your own custom structures and save them into structure blocks to share with your friends? Well, if you wanna learn all about structure blocks, then this video is for you, so let's get right into it. First and foremost, if you're on a multiplayer or single player world, you need to make sure that you have access to the give command. And if you do, then you can give yourself a Minecraft structure block just like that. And if you haven't seen my tutorial on the give command, you totally should check that out. Now, once you have the structure block in hand, all you have to do is place it on the ground and interact with it to get this menu. Now, that menu might look pretty complicated, and also, if you're on Bedrock Edition, it might look a little different, but keep in mind, Java and Bedrock structure blocks work essentially the same way, so this tutorial will work for both of you, and it's not that complicated, I promise you guys. So, when you go into this menu, the first thing I wanna point out is this button down in the left-hand corner of the screen that changes the mode of the structure block. When I click it, it actually makes the structure block look differently. And we're gonna talk about these three different modes in a moment, but first I wanna start with the load mode, which I used to load all of these structures behind us. So the next most important field is the structure name field. And that tells the structure block what structure you want to load. So obviously that's very important. Now, the hard thing is Minecraft has 866 different structures that you can load in, but there's no one place to find them all. So I wrote a Python script to gather them all and I put them down in the description of this video so you guys don't have to spend the time to look them up on the wiki. So for this first example, I'm going to pick the Desert Butcher Shop 1. And all you have to do is put in the name of the structure and then click the load button and that will bring up these bounds that will show you how big the structure is. Then to actually load the structure in, you just click load a second time, and here is our desert butcher shop perfectly loaded in. But of course, we don't want our butcher shop floating up in the air, we want it down on the ground. So the way we do that is we change the relative position of where this structure is loaded. So in this case, actually, I can set the Y axis to zero, and then that will move the structure down one whole block, and then I can click load again, and it's going to actually remove the structure that was there and leave a little bit of extra on the top, which we have to shave off, not too bad. And now our structure has been placed down one block. So that's the thing about relative position is you can choose where you want the origin of your structure to be and it makes it a little easier to place it more precisely. Now, if we made a desert village entirely out of butcher shops facing west, that would be pretty strange looking because there'd be no variety. Now, of course, we could place other desert village building types, but we can also add variety to these buildings by rotating them, mirroring them, and degrading them, all using structure blocks. Let's take a quick look at that. So the first way we can add some variety is to change the structure integrity. Initially, it's set at one, but if you put it to any number below one, then what it'll do is, in this case, set half of the blocks to air blocks when they spawn in. And it's actually pretty neat because what it'll do is make a structure look more degraded and more ruined the lower this number goes. You can even set a seed to make sure that the blocks that are removed are consistent every time. And if you want to rotate a structure before placing it, you can choose one of the numbers down below here. For instance, we can rotate our structure 90 degrees clockwise. And look at that. Now we have taken our existing building and rotated it like that. And of course, we can mirror structures by playing with the mirror setting down here in the bottom of the menu. So I'm going to go ahead and mirror it left to right and then I'll click load, and now we have a giant butcher shop that is combined and mirrored and actually looks kind of cool. Now, if you know your structure is going to include entities, like there are mobs or armor stands inside of it, then you need to make sure you also click include entities on when you load it. And if you don't want to see the bounding box, then you can set bounding box off and you no longer see that wireframe around the structure. So that is how we load any vanilla structure, but what about a custom structure that we create? And more importantly, how can we share those with our friends? Well, for that, 
we're going to have to take a field trip. And we are in the beautiful Swiss town of Rosewood that I am working on in my adventure map series. But I didn't just take you here to plug my own content. No, actually, I took you here because all of the houses in this town are created by structure blocks every day. And you're probably asking yourself, why would you do that? Well, stick around to the end of the video and you can see the town change at nighttime into the evil version, Vilethorn. But before we do that, we're gonna talk a little bit about how I created custom structures and how we load them in. So over in the meadow here, I have a replica of one of the houses from Rosewood, and I wanna save this into a custom structure. So the way to do that is actually pretty simple. We're going to place a structure block at one of the corners of this structure, and we're going to switch that structure block over to save mode. So save mode is configured almost identically to load mode. In fact, it's a little bit simpler. So you need to give your structure a name. In this case, I'll give mine test house. And really important is make sure you pick a name that you're going to remember and is unique. Because if you make another structure and you name it the same name somewhere in your world, you're going to overwrite that existing structure. And Minecraft doesn't protect against this. So be careful when you name things. Give them a better name than Test House. Be better than me. <laughs> now, the next few rows here allow us to select the bounds of our house. And now we have two options, the easy way or the hard way. And unfortunately, if you are not running on Minecraft 1.17.30 or later, then the hard way is the only option for you. But believe me, it's actually not that hard. And I was doing it this way for a long time. So the hard way is a little bit of guess and check and a little bit of measuring. So I've gone ahead and measured the bounds of my house to be 16 by 24 tall by 16 blocks. And when we hit OK, we see that the bounds are the right size, but they aren't actually over my house. So we need to nudge these a little bit to get everything into the right place. And that would be by setting both of these to minus 16. And now we have our house perfectly encapsulated by the bounds. So the hard way turns out is not that hard, but believe it or not, it gets a little bit easier with the introduction of the corner structure block. So the way that this works is you put a structure block down in one of the lower corners of your build, set it to corner mode, and make sure to name it the exact same name of the structure that you intend to save, like that. And then in the exact opposite corner of your structure, place another corner block and make sure it has the exact same name. Okay, and now here is the best part. So you place down your save command block and you make sure it has the exact same name as the corner command blocks. And you click this detect button. And what it'll do is it'll automatically figure out the bounds of your save region, which is kind of amazing and saved me so much time when I figured this out. Now it looks like I have to lower that corner block by one to get the floor there, but otherwise we are ready to save this house. And with that one small change, we go into our command block here. We add entities on in case there are any armor stands inside of that house and we click the save button. And now our custom structure is saved. And so I've gone ahead and put a load structure block down there with the name of our test house. And what's really cool about structure blocks is you can trigger them with redstone. So when I put redstone on top of that structure block, there is a clone version of our house. And of course we can rotate it, mirror it, and even decay it as much as we'd like, which is just so amazing and powerful. And now that we have a custom structure saved, we can actually share it with other worlds, including our friends' worlds. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about two important limitations that structure blocks have and how we work around them. The first limitation of structures saved into structure blocks is size. So the maximum a structure can be in any of X, Y, or Z direction is 48 blocks. So that means if any of these numbers here are greater than 48, your structure is not gonna save. And in fact, the relative position cannot be lower than negative 48 or higher than positive 48 blocks. Fortunately, there is actually a really clever way around this problem, and it's that you can store structure blocks inside of existing structures. So check this out. I have a submarine that is definitely longer than 48 blocks. So at the tail section of the sub, I put another structure block that when I switch it over to load mode and I load it in, the rest of the sub can come in. So you can actually store, I guess, an infinitely long structure that you can just continue to progressively load. And now I'm thinking maybe you could make a roguelike dungeon with something like that or 
a bunch of other things. <laughs> so anyways, that first limitation really isn't that big of a limitation if you work around it like that. The second limitation is that structures are saved in a cubic area, which means if I had a house with a roof like this, I'm also saving all of the air blocks in with the house itself. And so when I go to load this structure into the mountainside here, it cuts out a little more than I'd like. Fortunately, we have the structure void block, which you can give yourself like this. And the way this derpy little block looks, it definitely doesn't have the best sprite, is that you can place it in blocks where you don't want the structure to be saved. And it's a little hard to see. And so the way that you can improve visibility of these blocks is you go down to your save block and you say show invisible blocks on. And this is actually going to highlight air blocks and light blocks and a whole bunch of other ones. And now you can place in these structure voids, which when saved allows us to load our structure in nice and snugly on the mountain. So I need you to use your imagination for a moment because I want to get across my idea of where I think structure blocks could go and how they are the future of Minecraft. After all, they are the perfect way for players to share their builds with other players. So imagine if you are working on this town and you get totally stumped by this mansion build. You just aren't good at mansions and neither am I to be honest. Imagine if you could put down a structure block and you could search through a catalog of other builds and you could maybe filter by build palette and maybe keywords and you could see those builds in your world, and then when you finally find one that you like, you click the button and that build gets placed in. Imagine the power of that in getting builds from people all across the world in a sort of marketplace. Mojang, please, if this is where you're going with structure blocks, you totally should do it because people who build adventure maps like myself would get so much use out of it. But until Mojang and Microsoft decide to release this structure block marketplace, which may never happen, there is fortunately still a way to share structures between worlds and friends. I'll show you. So if you're in the Java edition of Minecraft, you just need to go to your worlds folder, open up the generated Minecraft structures folder, and this is where all of your saved structures live. Once you find the structure you're looking for, you can copy it and send it to a friend, or if you're moving it between your local worlds, then it's just as easy as going to that world, dropping it in the generated Minecraft structures folder. And in our new world, we place down a structure block. We put in the name of the file that we just pasted into the world. We click load, checks out. We click load again, and there is our house transferred between worlds. It blows my mind that this is so difficult to do, and it's not just a feature of Minecraft. Imagine if you could transfer between Java and Bedrock editions. And speaking of Bedrock, I linked a video in the description of this video where you should go check out how to transfer structures between Bedrock worlds because it is a little bit more complicated. Well guys, I hope you are excited to see this town turn over into its evil version once the sun sets behind that mountain over there every night. Every night, the change. <laughs> I am so excited to show you this and show you the true power of structure blocks. Of course, I highly recommend you check out my adventure map series where we build this whole town out. And if you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you wanna see more of this content, consider subscribing. But here begins the change. Here we go.